So our next speaker is me, Michael Whitehouse, the guy who knows a guy, the fun virtual event guy, and the guy running this event. I'm going to be talking about serendipitous event planning. And if you think I have an outline, slides, or notes, then you haven't been paying attention, don't know me very well, because I'm going to be sharing serendipitously some of the concepts that I use in running events, but I have run 22 of them, so I know a little bit. Uh, if there's anything anyone would really like to know about running events, whether it's events like this or any other kind of virtual event, feel free to throw that in the chat and I'll make sure to touch upon it in the next 15 or so minutes. And if you don't put anything there, I'll just talk about various things. So one of the things I've discovered running events, this intuitive concept came to me when I was running a podcast called the Power Live uh, Power Live Lunch. No. Power Power for Live Lunch? Well, I can't remember the name of my podcast. That's pretty terrible. Anyway, it was every Friday. <laughs> um and the short form of it was Power Lunch. So I had four guests on it every day, uh, every every week, and the way I determined which guests would be on the show is I would put out the application to various groups of speakers and they could fill it out and on the application and say, you know, what's your target audience and what's your experience and what's your website and yeah, things you put in a regular podcast application. And then which Fridays are you available? The show is always at two o'clock, which one works for you? And they would check off some various Fridays. And then I would go through and I would look at their descriptions of what they talked about and said, this person appears literate and very coherent and let's bring them on the show. I believe I had over the course of the time I ran it, something like 170 applications of which I accepted 168. So I was not super selective who I brought on the show. And the way I decided who would be on when was I would go in the order the applications came in and I would look at the first available Friday they selected. And I would check if that was available on my schedule. If it was, that's the date they were speaking. If it wasn't, I went to the next Friday they were available. And if that wasn't available, I went to the next one. And then I found one where it matched. Boom, that's their date. They'd get an email. Welcome to the show. This one you're coming on. And I started getting, and, and at first I'm like, this is totally born of laziness. This is, I don't want to do a lot of work to research and make sure that people are great speakers and, you know, and, and to line people up because I'm being lazy. Clearly this is going to be a train wreck. It's going to last for three or four weeks. And I'm going to stop doing it because it's going to be awful. Well, a crazy thing happened. People started saying, wow. Michael, you put together such an amazing lineup of people. How did you know we'd have these synergies? How did you know this person would have this background? This These two people went to college together. These three people, they all speak about the same topic, using the same terms because they all study from the same mentor. How did you know? And I said, I, I didn't. Total random luck of the draw. And I started saying that my producers are serendipity and random happenstance. I believe originally my producer was serendipity and then the show got too big and I needed two producers. So it became serendipity and random happenstance. So my show was run by the flows of the universe. I simply set up an algorithm and into that people came through and we had amazing things and it ran for about 15 months until random happenstance decided that the show wouldn't run anymore because people stopped filling out the application. And I said, well, that must mean my producers decided we've, we've completed our run. We're not going to run it anymore. And that was the end of the Power Lunch Live Show. That's what it's called, Power Lunch Live Show. Um, so from that, I realized that you don't necessarily need to do a lot to get something really good. You know, some of these shows, uh, that there will be teams of people spending hours and hours and hours of time to bring just the right people. And it is certainly... I'm not saying my Power Lunch live show is as good as a professionally produced show, but for something done by one guy and tapping into the universe, I think it stood up pretty well. And so often people think, wow, it's going to take so much to do. It. I don't know how I'm going to find the right people and line them up and put them in. The, what's the right order? And what's that? How do I present it? And, blah, blah, blah. and so they don't do it. And I just said, let's run it and see what happens. And then I started to discover that the same thing happened with these summits, including the one you're on that I brought people into the space and good things happen, but that actually goes back to when I used to run sci-fi conventions. And I realized what is the quintessence of a successful event? And the quintessence of a successful event is good people coming together in proximity. That's it. That's all a great event takes. Good people coming together in proximity. Maybe you might have music, maybe you might have speakers, maybe you might have classes, maybe you might have sports. 
But ultimately, it's people coming together, good people coming together in proximity. And the sports or the speakers or the music or the classes are the reason those people come together. And once I realized that, it was much less stressful to run an event. Because if a speaker wasn't there, whatever. If a speaker wasn't good, whatever. If an event didn't go off right, okay. Now, if someone got hurt or something went wrong, we burned the hotel down, yeah, that's a problem. But most of the things that we worry about, oh, oh my God, what if this performer doesn't show up? What if this doesn't happen? What if that doesn't happen? And I realized running events, that as long as you're open with people and you set the right expectations and you set the right energy and you're like, we're all here to have a good time together or we're all here to learn together or whatever, then no matter what happens, people are cool with it. Most event organizers will have a coronary if it gets to be time for a speaker to speak and the speaker's not in the room. Yeah, they're counting down. Oh my God, we're gonna have a speaker. The speaker's supposed to be on at two o'clock. They're not here yet. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna, the speakers, uh, how are we gonna fill the space? Part of it is the structure. If you have back-to-back speakers, you suddenly have dead air and you can't just pivot into a hot seat. Uh, so my structure is flexible, but it's also, they're just thinking, oh, what are we gonna do? What, what, what happens? What if we don't have this? Instead of saying, all right, what do we have? we got a bunch of cool people in a room. What are we going to do with 30 minutes with a bunch of cool people in the room? Let's do some good stuff. And once I realized what the, the quintessence of a successful event was, it became much easier to run one and run a good one. And the thing that threw me off, that they, the red herring on this, remember, I'm running sci-fi conventions since 1996. So I've been doing it for a while, but the red herring was all these people running events who are telling me, oh, we bring in 10,000 opt-ins and we make an average of $100,000 and we change the world and we cure a major disease every time we run an event. It's amazing. You just got to see. And then discovering that for most of these people, they are full of crap. They don't do anything near those results. That's their marketing material. That's their sales pitch to people who pay them to run events. And I discovered this one when I hired one of these people and did not get anywhere near the results that were promised. And two, when I was invited to speak at an event, it was told that they had 10,000 opt-ins and it was going to be huge and amazing. And I go into the room and there were 14 people there. 14 people on the screen. Now, were there 14 people there? I don't think so. I think there were eight people there because I said, could everyone please turn your cameras on? So I want to see who's actually there. And eight cameras turned on. And then I did something fairly interactive and it was pretty cool. And I said, all right, well, that was pretty cool. I got to hang out with eight cool people. It was a good time. Met some people. I think I had some follow-up meetings. Some good stuff came out of it. But it wasn't any 10,000 person event. Maybe they got 10,000 opt-ins, just no one showed up. Or maybe they were making up the number. I don't know which. But thus I discovered if I can have an event where 10, 20, 30, 40 people come together and some good things happen, that's great. Now, for an event like JV Connect, we need more than 30 people. We're going for 200 in the room because it's a networking event. And the deliverable is you're going to meet a lot of great people. So we need to have a quantity of great people. But for a summit like this, you don't necessarily need that. In fact, sometimes it's better. If we had 100 people, we might not have been able to have the kind of roundtable we did. We might not have been able to have uh, Shiraz do the demonstration that he did. We might not be able to have the breakouts like we do. There's a lot of things we can do in a smaller event with 10 to 40 people that you can't do in a 100, 200, 400 person event. The breakout rooms at JV Connect are much larger because the focus there is making initial contact with a large quantity of people so you can then do follow-ups with them. Afterwards, it's basically triaging connections and going quickly through and be like, no, no, maybe, no, yes, definitely want to talk to you. No, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no. Send out some calendar links onto the next one, which is a very different energy than this event where you're getting to know each other and supporting each other and coaching each other and and um, really creating more transformation. So when running an event, especially serendipitously, the key thing is to understand what the quintessence of your event is. What does success look like? What what is a successful event for you and what makes it that? And now if if that is, if a successful event is 10,000 opt-ins, you're not going to run an event like this. This event doesn't do that because it's not built that way. If you want 10,000 opt-ins, you want quantity, you're probably better off doing a giveaway than an event. You don't need the live portion of it. You just want people to opt in. But if you're trying to create connections, if you're trying to learn and network and have people come together with you and 
and build those relationships among the attendees and the participants and the speakers and make a happening, that's going to be a very different approach. So a lot of what we see in the online business space, including events, virtual events, is informed by a very quantitative measurement of business. You know, we're going to put out these ads and the ads are going to convert at this way to the landing page that has this conversion, which has a video sales letter that then goes into the opt-in that goes da, 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 down the funnel. And 19% uh, of those will go to 7% of this, will go to 42% of this, to 16% of this, $97. And that's going to make us $100,000. And if that's an event you want to run, great. You should probably hire an expert who knows how to do these things because the experts, the difference between the 22% conversion rate and the 6% conversion rate. And, you know, you want to get the expert who knows how to write a Facebook ad and you want to get the expert who knows how to build the landing page in the funnel. That's, that's very science. But for most of us running events, you want art. You don't want science. You want people to show up. You probably do want to learn if you're going to be offering something. You want to learn how to convert. You want to learn how to have a decent page. But it's more a matter of saying, what do I really want to make? What is the the thing I want to put into the universe by creating this event, either live or in per, uh, live or virtual. What is the quintessence? I like that word, I like big words like that. What is the quintessence of what I'm creating? And then what does it take to create that? With JV Connect, I had the idea of it two years ago. I attended a different event that was an enrollment event, but a great networking event. No, it was a great networking opportunity. A lot of the right people were in the room, but it was built to sell. So I, as someone who's been studying networking for a decade, went in and was like, I know what to do here. And when they said, hey, I want you all to go to the left, I'm like, cool, I'm going to the right because I'm networking. And left is where people are buying. I'm going to go network over here. So I was able to just do my thing. And I talked to people afterwards, like, yeah, I made a few connections. How many, you know, I, I met six, seven people. And I said, oh, I met 48 because I knew how to do it. So for the for quite some time, I said, I want to run that event but I want to run it to create the results I got creating those connections. And the event I attended was massively complex. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to run it. It had as this like fancy back end and gamification. It measured every time you clicked on something, it gave you points for it. And it had a forum built in and had all these different things going on. And it cost gazillions of dollars to run it. And it had a fancy landing page and the whole thing. And I'm like, I don't have the tools to put on that event. And one, one day I'm just lying there in bed Saturday morning, staring at the ceiling and suddenly it hits me. What don't I have to run the event I want to run? Not the event I attended, but the event I want to run. And I said, well, what do I really need? Well, I need a, a list of good people, people you really want an event, people who are established and, and trustworthy, you know, established, experienced and ethical. Uh, to be kind of the backbone of the networking community you're building. And then you'd need some way to sell event memberships and you'd need uh, some way to host it like Zoom and maybe some kind of landing page, like a dashboard that people can come in through and some kind of promotional page. And I have all of those things. Why haven't I run this event yet? And JB Connect was born. No, it was actually 36 stressful hours of figuring out what the, heck the name would be. Then it was born. But I realized I had it all. I'd been so fixated on needing all these different tools and things that for two years I sat on the idea and didn't run it. And finally realized you don't need all that stuff. A great event is fundamentally, for most events, putting good people in proximity to each other and letting good things happen. Online takes a bit more work because you don't have the benefit of the hallway and the bar and the parking lot for people to bump into each other. And I've, I've talked to people, whenever I tell these stories, invariably there's someone who says, oh, one of the best connections I ever made was going to the bathroom at an event. Alas, there is no bathroom on Zoom. so. There's no bathroom connections. There's no hallway connections. There's no bar connections. That's where the great things happen in live events. So it's a little more effort to create those spaces. But instead of spending $100,000 on an amazing dashboard, you know, these events have $100,000 dashboards and no breakout sessions. They can eliminate the dashboard, create the breakout sessions, have a better event. So if you're thinking about creating any kind of events, then the key is bring the people into it. You have the asset, not only of the speakers, the presenters, the performers, whatever it is, you have the asset of the entire audience that creates the real value for that event. And the way I'd think about it is this. Imagine your favorite band, whoever that might be. 
if you were invited to come to, if you had two choices, you'd come to a concert where you could sit anywhere you wanted, whatever the best seats are for their concert, and be there with the crowd, or they would perform the concert for just you in the stadium, you're by yourself, you and the band. You would probably choose the concert with the audience because the audience is part of the experience. Otherwise, you just need really good speakers at home. So it's about the people. It's about bringing people together. It's about the quintessence of the event. And once you have that, it's just about letting it happen and getting out of the way of good things happening. And that is my serendipitous, serendipitous presentation on my serendipitous process of event planning. Thank you for your attention.